What's up guys? Today we're going into documentation, which isn't the sexiest topic, I know, but it is a skill I think is good to develop and maintain. Before we do all that, please give me a like and subscribe if you like what I've been doing so far. But first, the scenario. You're you're coding at night, you're you're getting tired, can't figure out this problem, so you search up on Google, how do I do this? And you you see someone asked a similar question on Stack Exchange, Stack Overflow, whatever it's called. You click on it and you see that poor soul has just been ripped apart by the moderators. The moderators just say things like, you can just Google this, or they'll link a ton of other questions that are very similar and say, look at this instead. I mean, that's just them being direct, so that part's fine. Now, understanding what's going on here, there is understanding on the moderator's part where they deal with hundreds of people that probably post questions that are just like that, that show that the person didn't really try to solve their own issue. They just came across a problem, asked it, and, you know, didn't really provide any critical thinking of trying to solve it, solving it themselves. The moderators kind of deal with that stuff, and a lot of them are doing this stuff for free, where they're just there to help people, but they become numb to the system because a lot of people just kind of abuse it because they think there's just this free help here. Now, understanding on the questioner side, there is a lot of documentation out there for different things, and a lot of it is not super great. There is stuff on websites, there's different sources, and I'm going to be showing examples of that right now. Reading documentation, even when it's actual standardized documentation, can be pretty intimidating and it's tough to sift through the rough. So, you know, it's, it's a skill to develop. And even though it's something that seems pretty simple of, oh, I can just read this and I'll figure it out. Sometimes people can't do that. And it's something that you actually need to keep building up. So let's, let's look at what I have here. So this is some old code that I wrote, well, older this year. And it's an ODE module that I coded up. You can see some of the codes here. And if you're interested in it, I'll also provide that link. This has some Euler method and RK4 and some other stuff. Now, this part is the Julia standard. So you can see it has the function header. It has a small description and an argument list. This part is my own little flare. I like to provide, a, like, I guess a header for the file especially if it's a module, and I describe what the module name is, I say who made it, which is me in this case. I don't really include dates anymore. I find that to be a bit frivolous. And then any extra tidbits. So I didn't come up with the Euler's method. I got it from a book. So I cite that source. Just so if I need to find where I got it, I have it right there. And then this is like a table of contents. So if I needed to search up RK4, and just do a quick search and it's right here oh, maybe i'm interested in this one right there or back to the top so following the standard helps in the sense that when you import the module it imports all your documentation so if i do ode uh, oilers method you can see it has all my code right there or all my my standard and it has all this information goes more in depth and let's say let's look at the print print example so you can see this one has its own has its own description and it has examples in this case now things i don't like about the standard the julia standard it doesn't provide a standard for describing what's returned so usually you see it in the description um, but it's not inherently in the argument list or like a return list, which I don't find to be the best. And they like their documentation very terse. Now, if you look at prints, they, they don't provide an argument list, so they don't really describe what IO is. They don't describe what XS is. And I guess you can figure it out from examples, but it's, it's, I mean, I find it where it's, you know, they could say, they could be saying more. And same in mind, right? So I, I'm following their standard and I didn't provide a, a return description. So really all you can get is that it approximates the solution of the IVP. Now, if you don't know math, maybe you don't know what that means at all. 
and that's that's something on the standard. But it's something, and if this is Euler's method, a user can look up more on Euler's method of what is this doing, and get at least somewhat of a heading of what to do. Okay, so this is me writing documentation, and I've I've grown to actually really like writing documentation. For me, it's a signal that I'm done with this function, I'm done with this code, done with this module, whatever. But it's also a way to show that you actually understand what's going on. I'm like fully, I'm trying to write my own description, trying to make sure I know what's being inputted into it. It kind of develops that mastery and being able to describe. Okay, so writing documentation helps in that it'll make your code look more mature. It also helps in that it, you develop those skills on how to read documentation. Now let's let's look at some examples. So this here is the Julia standard. I'm going to provide this link as well, but they just describe how you should document stuff, right? They say don't repeat yourself, only provide argument lists when necessary, yada yada yada. Now looking at the numpy array documentation. Now numpy array I really like, or just the numpy documentation. So their documentation is pretty good. So they, they have a similar thing. They have the function header, they have small description, create an array, that's all it does. But they have this massive parameter list, right? And they go super in depth into all of these. And then they also describe, okay, this is optional, they describe the data types, they and they have a return, so it does this, outputs that. And then they have examples and all this stuff. And you may think I'm being a little unfair, where I uh, I only showed prints, but like let's say we look at some, and just for another point, this documentation that you usually see in the REPL is what's also usually dis displayed online, so you should see this the same stuff. But looking at some, um, what do we have here? So here they are, they at least put the, the return in the description. So that's at least there, but you have to kind of look for it rather than it being in a list. They once again, don't have, uh, the argument list. So calling function F on element of iter. Well, okay. Um, what is iter? Is iter, I guess they just case it's an element. But I thought f was a function. I didn't know it was an array. So like all that stuff is, is like I can probably figure out what it's doing. You know, just you know, looking at these examples. But it's it's being vague, and that's just things I don't like when it comes to documentation. And you, you can see I'm kind of ranting here, um, but you can see more. So they have more examples here. They at least put. The, the types so you can figure out okay this has to be an array and it shows how it works with it sum of elements but here this one doesn't tell you what the return type is so you know it's a sum but is it a float is it an int is it a real is it a complex you know just you know all these little things that they're trying to be terse but i also feel like they're missing information okay so Numpy is a good example of good documentation, and for the most part, it's going to look like I'm be bashing, bashing on Julia right now, but it's, you know, it happens. Now, CSV, another example. Now, if you looked up how to open a CSV file, you may come across this link, and it says, okay, just do this, right, using CSV read, yada, yada, yada. Okay, well, I already have CSV read imported, so if I do CSV... Uh, data, do that. Okay, it worked out fine. Now, what is CSV read documentation? Um, okay, doesn't provide much. The source, I don't know what source is. I guess it's like that string I provided. Uh, I, I don't know what these are. They don't describe them at all. Directly using the sync function, which they don't really describe. Maybe I want to go through the CSV documentation. If you go through this, there is actually no mention of CSV read, which is another layer of, okay, well, what, what is this? Like I, 
I guess I got this to work, but maybe maybe you have a more complex case and you just like can't figure it out. Um, you can see it leads you to CSV file. So you can look at that, which this has a lot more. And hopefully this can help you answer your questions. But this is this is how this is how the search begins. You start going through different examples, seeing okay, this does this, I have this led me to there. And using those searches, the control F, the forward slash, any of those to search your file, search the documentation, all help in reading <laughs> this the standard of code. And that gets developed along with your writing. So all this is kind of coming back to you should write documentation. <laughs> um, depending on the code that you're writing in. So I, like I said, I, I'm writing Julia right now. So I follow the Julia standard, even though I don't like it that much. If I was coding in Python, I follow Python standard. Or more specifically, I try to follow NumPy's or SciPy's. And all these standards develop those skills of learning how to parse what's being given and find the, the diamond in the rough. All right, so that's pretty much what I have here. It's not the most advanced video, um, but I do feel that documentation is kind of overlooked when it comes to the education setting and just kind of all around. And it's definitely a skill to develop. It helps you become a better, better programmer, how to read code, how to read different repositories. It kind of comes with the ground of being an open source because even though it looked like I was bashing on Julia and the developers, don't mean for it to sound like that. They work very hard and a lot of them are working for free. And things like this just happen because there's things behind, uh, some stuff isn't all up to date, some stuff is just incomplete. They, they're all working on their own schedule. So us as users have to get good at trying to find what we need from from this code now csv read was really difficult to find you know, i found this through a website and i can't find it in the documentation maybe at this point if you can't find it anywhere else then you would go to stack exchange and you would say hey i searched here here and here here are the links here's my question what is csv read they don't really provide much information on it and you know you, you lead to that culmin culminating point but it's also good to have your own standard of making sure that you did your due diligence of reading the documentation before you start asking other people. <laughs> and as long as you show that you did the, your due diligence, they're pretty forgiving. Okay, I am done rambling now. If you liked what I did, once again, please give me a like and subscribe. And thank you.